Mr. Richmond, this is your Integrated Math 2, Unit 4.2 Lesson Summary. In Unit 4.2, we're going to continue our study of similar triangles um, and actually start talking about ways in which we can prove that triangles are similar or verify that triangles are similar, maybe even construct similar triangles. And this section this chap of this chapter is very similar to something you did back in Integrated Math 1, um, which we'll actually revisit um, this year in Chapter 5 and 6, which is what makes triangles congruent. And when we did that, we found out that certain shortcuts existed, such as if all three sides of a triangle were congruent to all three sides of another triangle, they were congruent by side, side, side. We also did some called side, angle, side, angle, side, angle. There were several. Um, some of those still exist with similarity, but because um, similarity requires sides to be in proportion, we're going to look for sides to be in proportion rather than congruent. Um, and since similar triangles have to have congruent angles, anything involving angles will still have to be congruent. But because it's a little more picky in that sense, we don't have quite as many um, ones to choose from or to use. So let's start with the three different uh, triangle similarity theorems that we can use that verifies that two triangles are similar without finding all the side lengths and all the angles. That will always work, finding all the angles and all the side lengths and using that to show they're similar. But we can shortcut that because of some of these theorems. So the first one is the angle-angle triangle similarity theorem. It states that if two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another, then the triangles are similar. And the reason for that is if you take any sort of triangle and you make the exact same three angles, no matter how you extend this out now, you're going to have the same triangle. So if all three angles are the same, they are similar triangles. Obviously my drawing is not doing that much justice, but you get the idea. Um, the reason why we don't have to actually have all three angles though to prove that they're congruent, we can just do angle-angle, is because of the triangle sum theorem. If I know these two angles are the same, let's say 50 and 50, right? Or even 50, 60, that add up to 110, this angle has to be 70. So then if these are 50 and 60, would add up to 110, this has to be 70. So anytime I know two angles are congruent to another two angles, I automatically know the third one is similar. So that's why we don't have to do angle, 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 triangle similarity, we just need angle, angle. So at any point you know two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of the other, corresponding wise, you don't have to even find any side lengths, those are, are similar triangles. Um, Another one we can do is side, side, side. So if you don't know any angle measures, but you know side lengths, we can look for proportionality amongst the side lengths to prove they are similar. So if all three corresponding sides of a triangle are proportional, then the triangles are similar. So here I have a triangle, I don't know any angle measures at all, but I know all the side lengths. And so long as I compare the side lengths together and find that they're proportional, then I know they're similar. So three and six correspond together. Six is two times bigger than three. 8 corresponds here, it's 2 times bigger than 4, and 10 here corresponds to 5 and is 2 times bigger. So they've remained in the same proportion. Each side has become 2 times bigger than the original, so even without knowing the angles, I can say that these two triangles are similar. So when you just know three corresponding pairs of sides, you can use side, side, side. Another one is side, angle, side, triangle similarity theorem. If two pairs of corresponding sides are proportional, and the included angles are congruent, then the triangles are similar. Um, so this is similar to the side angle side you had with congruence, congruent triangles. The big key to remember here is that the angle is the included angle, which means it's the angle between the two sides you know. It has to be directly in between or comprised of the two sides that you know. So I know six and nine are side lengths, and I know this one angle. That's enough for me to prove it's similar, as long as the other triangle has the exact same angle, has to always be the exact same angle, and the sides stay in the same proportion. Okay? Six divided by three is two, so one third of it. Nine divided by three, or one third of it is three. So it's actually shrunk by a, a factor of one third. So the side, the two side lengths that are corresponding are in proportion and they share a congruent angle. That's enough for me to prove that these are indeed similar triangles. Okay, and that's the three um, that we can do. And one thing you'll do in the book is construct these. And that does definitely help you understand this a little further. And I don't have the time to show all the constructions again. Um, you're using some of the stuff you learned from unit one. Um, but make sure you look through that section and I'll kind of briefly talk about how you can construct some of these, but I won't go through the full construction. 
but it definitely lets you see how there it really limits what you can make um, as far as the triangle goes. Okay, and now let's talk about deciding which one to use and possibly setting up some proofs. So I'm going to give you kind of limited information. You have two triangles here. You have triangle ABC and you have triangle ECD. And don't mind the curvature of my drawing here. Okay, art's not my my best subject, so I'm doing my best here to make a straight line. But that should be straight. That's BD connecting um, and AE connecting straight through. There's no curve there. So it gives us this. AB is parallel to DE. So I know AB is parallel to DE. What theorem could I use to prove triangle ABC? It's really all they give me, so I'm going to have to um, rely on some previous knowledge here. One thing I do remember previous knowledge wise is that I have two parallel lines, and any time in geometry they give you parallel lines, so you want to look back to these chapter two theorems you learned. But I have two parallel lines intercepted by a transversal. Okay, and we learned that when you have, and I'll kind of extend these out so you can see it, when you have two parallel lines intersected by a transversal, you start to get some angles that are congruent. And if I remember correctly, I have an angle here that corresponds to an angle here. And those are angles on alternate sides of the transversal and are inside the parallel lines. So the angle A and angle E are alternate interior angles, which means angle A is congruent to angle E because they are alternate interior angles. So that is the alternate interior angles theorem. So I, I have a little bit of information to work with now. Since I know that about the angles, I have a possibility of being able to use side angle side or angle angle. I'm not going to be able to use side side because I haven't learned anything about the sides, but I could use these if I can get another angle or get a couple of corresponding sides. Now, since they didn't give me any side lengths at all to work with, that kind of eliminates that. The only one I'm going to be able to use to make this happen is angle angle. So I need to prove that two other, uh, one other pair of angles is congruent. And I do see one right here. I see that angle C or angle ACB has to be congruent to angle DCE because it's making vertical angles. And if you remember back to chapter two, vertical angles are congruent. So I can say angle ACB is congruent to angle DCE. You'll notice I used had to use three letters for that. That's because here, really the only angle A that you can see in the problem is the one uh, made here. But here I have two potential angle C's. Um, I don't want to call them angle C, angle C, because that would mean they're the exact same angle and they're not. So whenever you have an angle using the same point, two different angles, you need to use at least three letters to define it. So ACB is congruent to DCE because of the vertical angles theorem. And now that I have proven that two different pairs of angles are congruent, I have the same image I had there in the first one, I can say that triangle ABC is similar to triangle ECD. And in case you forgot from the book, the similar symbol is very uh, similar to the congruent symbol, just without the equal sign. So it's just our one little squiggle there. And they are similar because of the angle-angle similarity theorem. And I didn't put this into a full proof form, you know, statements, reasons, or a flow of paragraph proof. Um, really, I just put it kind of in the idea of a reason and a justification. And, and test-wise, it can come any way. It could be a formal proof. But sometimes we'll just ask you to explain how something is uh, similar or congruent and use complete senses or just kind of organize your reasoning. So as long as it's understandable there, we'll be pretty happy. Okay, and last thing I want to do here is take a quick look at how you can show some triangles are similar using these theorems. I didn't do all of them, but I'm going to show you two possible options. Um, if I gave you a triangle ABC and I asked you to make a triangle that's similar to that, there's a couple things that happen. One, I just need to keep the angles really the same. A, B, and C need to stay the exact same angles because corresponding angles have to be congruent. And I just have to change the side lengths of A, B, A, C, and B, C proportionally. That's really it. But I don't have to do all three sides and all three angles to make that happen because I have triangle similarity theorems that shortcut that sum. So, depending on which one you're going to use, you just have to look for that. And usually if you decide that beforehand, it makes it a little easier. Like if I'm going to go, you know what, I want to do it by doing two side lengths that are in proportion and an inside angle. Um, or sorry, uh, inscribed angle that is congruent. 
Well, then do exactly that. Choose an angle to start with. So I might start with angle B, and I need to copy it. Draw my segment, make my arc, measure, um, copy the angle. And so if you don't remember how to copy an angle, go back and look at um, Math 1's construction ones. I believe it's chapter 12 or so. Um, and copy an angle, okay? Now that it's copied, you decide, do I want to make it a bigger triangle or a smaller triangle? If you want to make it bigger, all you have to do is take segment AB, measure it, put your point, repeat that, and double it. And now you've made side length A image, B image twice as big as the original. And since I decided to make my scale factor two, I repeat that scale factor now for BC. And I can take BC and do the same thing. Uh, copy the image twice, or the segment twice, and I've extended the length of it twice. And so I have an inscribed angle that's congruent. I have two side lengths that have doubled the original. All I have to do now is connect them, and I've made a side angle side similar triangle. Okay? That's one way. Another way would just be go angles. If you can get two angles, angle angle similarity theorem, copy some angles and you're good. Take angle A, redraw it, copy it. Remember, it doesn't really matter how far you extend it out because that's how we're going to change it. So I just kind of copied the small part of the angle. I can then extend it out really far and make it bigger or make it smaller. In this case, I'll make a smaller one. It doesn't even matter. I can choose whatever length. As long as it's not the same as AB, I might only go a third of the way now out. Call that point B image. Now, copy angle B there so that it keeps the same exact angle measure. So I copy angle B using instructions. I've made A image, B image shorter than the original AB, but kept angle A and angle B the same exact lengths. Now that that's happened, all I have to do is to use a straight edge and extend out angle A to angle B, and you have a similar triangle by AA. So for the test, you do need to be able to potentially do a construction um, involving similar triangles, so make sure you try this side, 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 angle, angle, um, side, angle, side, and that you can make it that way. Um, as well as potentially set up kind of basic proofs involving similarity. All right, thank you and good luck.